the U.S. Department of Labor orders a Virginia concrete contractor to pay $1.2 million in stolen wages, damages, and penalties. We're going to wrap up with Boss Watch. Boss Watch uh, is the uh, mirror the mirror to last week in Southern Labor, where we take a look at what workers were up to. We also take a look at what bosses were up to. We pull some press releases from the Department of Labor, from OSHA, places like that. Uh, we're going to start in Florida, where federal workplace safety investigators have determined that a Tampa area construction contractor could have prevented a 37-year-old aerial lift operator from suffering fatal injuries after being struck by a boom as a crane tipped over during, a, during work on an Orlando highway ramp in October 2023. Investigators with the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration found the incident occurred while employees of Concrete Impressions of Florida Incorporated in Tampa and Adcock Cranes Incorporated in Plant City installed precast concrete sound barrier panels on the southbound SR-417 ramp. OSHA determined that the Concrete Impressions operator was working in an aerial lift as a 10,700-pound panel was being lifted into place by an Adcock Cranes employee. During the process, an outrigger gave way and tipped the 110 uh, Liber crane toward a slope which struck the employee on a lift in the crane's swing radius. OSHA cited Adcock cranes with one serious violation for not ensuring the ground conditions were adequate to support the crane while lifting sound barrier panels. The agency proposed $16,000 in penalties for Adcock cranes. The agency also cited concrete, concrete impressions of Florida with one serious violation for allowing workers to take apart and use extension ladders to reach sound barrier panels and uh, one other than serious violation for the contractor not documenting the required 12-month record of the inspections of a chain used to lift sound barrier panels. The agency has proposed about $5,000 in penalties for that employer. Construction safety standards that prevent workplace incidents, incidents involving mobile overhead and rail-mounted cranes are industry standards. They were enacted following a high rate of injuries and fatalities related to crane operations in the construction industry, and yet the Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics reported that 12 crane operators died in 2022 staying in Florida. Making the trip from Mexico to South Florida, a 26-year-old man arrived in September 2023, ready to start a new job on a sugar cane farm in Bell Glade. Four days later, he suffered fatal heat-related injuries while working in an open field as the heat indexed, index reached 97 degrees. An investigation by the U.S. Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration found that McNeil Labor Management Incorporated of Bell Glade found the farm labor contractor who hired the young man under the federal H-2A program for temporary or seasonal non-immigrant workers could have prevented his death by implementing safety rules to protect workers from heat-related hazards. These include uh, using an effective plan to help workers acclimate to weather conditions. OSHA investigators learned that the worker, sitting atop stacks of sugarcane on a trailer as he tossed them onto the ground for planting, began experiencing symptoms consistent with heat-related illness and complained of not feeling well shortly after he collapsed. The field in which he worked is about an hour west of West Palm Beach, 20 minutes from the closest road and 22 miles from the hospital to which he was transported and where he later died, stricken by a heat stroke. <clears throat> As average temperatures rise across the U.S., heat illness is a growing safety and health concern for workers both indoors and outdoors. The Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates that environmental heat exposure claimed the lives of 36 workers in 2021 and 56 in 2020. After its investigation, OSHA cited McNeil Labor with one serious violation for exposing workers to hazards associated with high ambient heat while working in direct sunlight. Federal investigators also found that the employer did not report the worker's hospitalization or eventual death, both of which the law requires to be reported. McNeil Labor Management faces about $27,000 in proposed penalties, an amount set by federal statute. The company is contesting the findings before the independent Independent Occupational Safety and Health Review Commission. Hey, five seconds. Just wanted to say that this is only possible because of our donors. If you want to see more of this, then consider donating yourself at tvlr.fm slash donate. 
in Alabama, Greg or Auto Collection Incorporated, a group of car dealerships, has agreed to pay about $325,000 and provide other relief to settle a U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission lawsuit, alleging that the Texarkana, Texas-based company fired a senior sales executive to avoid medical costs related to his cancer diagnosis. According to the lawsuit, Greg or Auto fired the 65-year-old employee in February 2020 without prior warning and informed him that his health insurance coverage would end effective immediately. The EEOC contended this came shortly after the worker received billing statements for a costly surgery to treat a serious cancer. The suit alleged that Greg or Otto knew the company would be exposed to the employee's ongoing health care expenses under its self-insured employee health care plan and therefore replaced him with a significantly young, younger worker in his mid-30s. Such conduct violates the Americans with Disabilities Act and the Age Discrimination in Employment Act, which prohibits employers from discriminating based on disability or age. The EEOC filed suit and uh, after first attempting to reach a pre-litigation settlement. As part of the con uh, consent decree settling the case, Greg or Otto agreed to update its anti-discrimination policies and to provide its upper management with training on disability and age discrimination. In Virginia, the U.S. Department of Labor has obtained a consent judgment in federal court that orders a Virginia concrete contractor to pay $1.2 million in stolen wages, damages, and penalties after its investigation found the employer misclassified 29 workers as independent contractors and failed to pay proper overtime to its employees. The action in the U.S. District Court for the Eastern District of Virginia in Alexandria follows an investigation by the department's Wage and Hour Division of Village Concrete Incorporated, a Manassas employer that allegedly misclassified the affected employees as independent contractors. By doing so, the employer failed to pay required overtime rates for hourly, day rate, and salaried workers. The division also found the company allegedly falsified work, uh, records to make it appear that they had paid workers overtime, wrongly categorized salaried employees as exempt from overtime, and denied employees pay for distances traveled related to work. In addition, Village Concrete failed to keep accurate records of the hours employees worked and compensation the company paid them. The consent judgment requires the employer to pay 81 employees $564,000 in back wages and an equal amount in liquidated damages. It also bars Village Concrete from future Fair Labor Standards Act violations and affirms civil money penalties of $67,000 the department assessed for the employer's willful violations. Uh, several dishonorable mentions this week. Par uh, Parodies Incorporated, a mobile home transportation company in Maxwell, Texas, operating as Superior Service, misclassified 32 laborers and drivers as independent contractors when, in fact, the division determined they are employees. Investigator found the company violated federal law by failing to pay the required time and a half its employees' hourly wages for hours over 40 per work week. <clears throat> and by not keeping federally required records. The Wage and Hour Division of the Department of Labor recovered $84,000 in stolen wages. A contractor with a history of failing to protect employees from working in trenches from potentially deadly harm, Giant Construction Corporation in Tayan, Guam, faces penalties of more than $1 million after federal investigators found employees working in trenches deeper than five feet without required safety equipment. This is the sixth OSHA inspection of the company sixth since 2014, and it has been cited multiple times related to trench safety. An investigation by the U.S. Department of Labor's Wage and Hour Division determined that Day Debut Mechanical Incorporated, a federal subcontractor on the Paxton Apartments construction project in the District of Columbia, misclassified nine sheet metal workers and insulators as laborers. By doing so, the employer did not pay them the proper prevailing wages and fringe benefits in violation of the Davis-Bacon and related acts. The division also determined that Day Debut had incomplete payroll records, submitted falsified payrolls, and failed to provide required records, all violations of the Fair Labor Standards Act. The division recovered $20,000 in back wages and $13,000 in fringe benefits for nine employees.
A series of U.S. Department of Labor investigations at seven Freddy's Frozen Custard and Steak Burgers franchise locations in Alabama has found the operator employed 149 children under the age of 16 to work longer and later than legally permitted by federal child labor provisions and tasked a 15-year-old child with illegally operating a manual deep fryer. The department assessed the employer with $119,000 in civil money penalties. You just saw a clip from the Valley Labor Report. We are live every Saturday morning from 9.30 a.m. till 12.30 p.m. And we pride ourselves on keeping all of our content free to everybody so that we can talk to as many working folks as possible. If you support the work that we're doing, you think that it's important, you think that it's good, then consider making a monthly contribution to the project, and you can do that on our website, tvlr.fm. Which side are you on?